Well, we're definitely, of course, going to look at the swing states. We don't expect uh, people to come to Illinois, but Illinois is mobilizing mm -hmm. to go to Wisconsin and Michigan. I, and from my district, the second district, I've already recruited a number of people to go to Wisconsin and campaign and go to Michigan. And that's what we're doing all around the country. Those states that we look at as more blue are helping the states and deploying to the states that are more red or more purple. And, uh, and that's how the resources will be divvied up. But like, I'm even going to Florida um, in the next week. And I know some of my colleagues right <laughs> from the convention, they went to Michigan. Mm -hmm. Well, Michigan makes sense to me. Florida is interesting. We're hearing more and more about what the Sunshine State might mean in this campaign. And God, I'm old enough to remember when that was the state you had to win. That was the swing state. And you wonder if some of these red states are turning purple in the ways that the Cook Political Report, Sabato's crystal ball, are suggesting. Congresswoman, you're on the Committee on Energy and Commerce. And there's a big debate right now about how to keep the economy moving again and how to bring prices lower. Donald Trump says the answer is drill, baby, drill. Knowing, of course, that we're already producing a record amount of gas and oil in this country. Uh, would that work to bring prices down? Drill, baby, drill, starting his first day in office. What would that mean for our economy? Well, like you said, we're already drilling, so I don't know how much that would work. But we do have to work on lowering costs because even though we no, things are better. There's a lot of positive, but still some people are not feeling it. So we have to keep continuing to look at the kitchen table, the grocery stores, what the gas prices are, even though those have come down some too, interest rates and things like that, because that's what touches people every single day. We can say what we want, but people go grocery shopping every week. But there's, you know, just like housing, we have to look at but like legislation that we've passed under the Biden-Harris administration will help bring uh, people into the middle class. There's been a lot of jobs uh, created, good paying jobs, and we have to keep doing more of that. Well, of course, through the position on your committee, you're focused on this LNG export ban, uh, which is something that's gotten a lot of talk here this year. Would Kamala Harris maintain that export ban while this review is taking place? I'm sure. You know, I don't want to speak for us, and say I'm sure, but she probably would wait until, you know, she got all the facts uh, before she made a decision. She seems like, you know, she's a strategic woman, and she's going to look at everything before she jumps to make a decision. You know, we're hearing from a terminal subscriber uh, right now, Congresswoman, who, who seems to think there's an asymmetry in media coverage here. Kamala Harris is expected to provide a detailed uh, policy white paper here, and Donald Trump says drill, baby, drill, and that's considered a proposal. Do you, do you agree? I do agree. <laughs> he has a lot of little slogans that he puts forth, and people accept that. When he says the... Um, I, crazy things he says, people just say, oh, that's Donald Trump. And it just seems like we're held to a higher standard. I have always felt like that. And uh, he could get away with things because he's Donald Trump that other people uh, cannot get away with, cannot say, uh, you know, uh, they have to prove themselves more. And I feel mm -hmm. that's very unfair. And I'm sure because of uh, her being a female, a woman of color, uh, that's even more pronounced. Well, in our remaining moment, Congresswoman, I'd love for you to speak to that. Because Donald Trump continues to question Kamala Harris's racial identity, and after a night in which she spent quite a bit of time reintroducing herself, talking about her biography, I wonder if you think this is going to be uh, a, a course through this campaign, if this is going to be a talking point through this campaign. It may be a talking point for him, but yes, yeah, there's a lot of first, but um, she's qualified. When they call it DEI, we say definitely earned it. She's had a brilliant career. <laughs> She's been a good vice president. And he's the last person that she should have to prove herself to. But she's making her case, and we're going to help her make her case.